Ladies and gentlemen, I've been trying to do a couple of videos. I talk about it in a video, so you don't need me going over it now. All on the same subject, teaching you all how to create your own bonds, your own bills of exchange, and to back them with collateral, i.e. tax credits. However, the system doesn't want me telling you all that information. Let me shut this off. In fact, there are four videos that were being done. Why four? Because every single time I tried to bring that information to y'all's attention, whoo-wee, let's just say it said you ain't doing nothing. You ain't doing nothing. And so it turned my mic off so you all couldn't hear me. So what I had to do is I had to download this software right here. This software right here. Right here. And right here, this software, I had to download it so I can splice three videos together. You feel me? But if you don't feel me, then you just going to have to. Anyway. Wait, what did Tupac say? Baby, take it easy. Okay. Now. What? He said it. I didn't. All right. Anywho. Ladies and gentlemen, in one of the videos I was talking about giving you guys this type of information in those videos, the ones that I'm about to do, giving you that type of information I'm the only one taking a risk. That's these videos right here. Right here. And by taking such a risk, -wee, a lot of trouble comes my way. Something wicked this way comes. And what 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 happened was I forgot to tell you that uh oh contains invalid character. What do you mean? How does it contain an invalid character? Hold on. Get, get out of here. Nobody want to talk to you. Uh, information? Wait, then how come you got three videos there, homie? That that don't make no sense, does it? Yep, it got it, it contain it does contain an invalid character technically, but it don't contain an invalid character. That apostrophe and don't. All right, now I need to join these videos together. So where's my joinder? Replace audio, cut without, no, merge. Ooh-wee! And I don't want no advanced features. Audio settings, don't need to do all that. Set functions, and I ain't got to add no suffix. Work during an activity. Give me that. It won't let me click. It just said you ain't doing nothing. This is a software that's free. So what you expect, okay? So we're going to start the function while I'm doing this video. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I don't understand this. I just put the... I just put the three files here. I just put the three files here. It tells me to start a function. Conjunction, junction. What's your function? And I, I don't know. I'm going to get you there if you're very careful. Okay. Let's see. Open destination at the end. And let's try this again. File name. We're going to do, let's do desktop. I said desktop, so why don't you get my desktop? It did home. Too much. I-N-F-O-R-M-A-T-I-O-N. Too much information. That's going to be the title I save it under. And now it looks like it's trying to do something. I don't know because, uh-oh, says the following fields were not able to be processed. Too much information, error opening output such as file directory, error opening input file, 
no such file or directory. Oh, yeah, because it did it stupid. It was stupid. <sighs> I'm trying to merge the three docu the three files up there. So we gonna do is we gonna go here. Let's learn this together, y'all. All together now. Anyway, libraries. No, we can go to desktop. This desktop, which is home. See. I know it's home. All right, now we go to home. Uh oh, it ain't home. Oh well, it ain't home. This is home. And we are information. I need to go to video. And it's going to give me my three videos, but we got to have the videos done this way. I got to have them in detail because I got to see what I was doing. And then we're going to have it by date. And then that gives us these three right here. Get back there. Sorry, I got to select all three. Let's see if it's going to let me select all three. I think it's, I think it's, my mind's playing tricks on me, but I think it's playing tricks. Let me go answer um, these uh, people. All uh, right, there's somebody calling from prison, so y'all excuse me, okay? Okay, that software ain't going to work, so I have to do it on a cell phone. So that's the thing right now. I had to transfer everything to the cell phone, ladies and gentlemen, so I have to do those videos on the cell phone and then upload them from the cell phone and so forth. That's what I have to go through for y'all. Now, hold on now. As I stated in the video, all of you stat packers, every single one of you, any of the programs that you're in, that information that's in the video that will be put up after this video, it is is applicable to each and every one of you okay all you got to do is pay attention to the information and for those of you who are trying to figure out how to get this and get that and create this and create that and how to handle this instrument and that instrument that video covers it that's why i've been having so many problems all day trying to put this video up so it will be up for you all okay Sixty trillion dollars worth for all of you who have joined the four hundred billion dollar lawsuit if you do it right. Sixty trillion dollars, and by the way, the video explains how it is completely legal. There is nothing illegal about it. It is not an outlandish and out it is not an outrageous number. Now, if you want to believe that it is an outrageous number, then that shows you your lack of understanding. There is no money. There is no money, but the national debt is going up $2 trillion, $2 trillion. They claim annually. We know that's a lie. Every single week, at least, the national debt is going up $2 trillion because when they release those 900, I mean, the $9 billion in stimulus, when they did that stupid stuff and everybody just said, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, and they just wanted more and more and more, ladies and gentlemen, they have to pay interest on that money. So you go ahead and you calculate the interest on $9 trillion. And it ain't been paid back yet because you didn't have to pay it back. Go ahead. Go ahead. Show me where you had to pay it back. So since you didn't have to pay it back, it's still out there in the ether. Sorry, my phone is ringing. I got to answer it. I apologize. Hello. Minding my own business, doing a video, and these people hearing me telling you that I got to put them on hold? Ladies and gentlemen, this is two calls today. This is, well, that was the third one. The first person who called, he had to go eat. So he called me back. Then the second person from prison called me and had to speak with him now the other person the one who had to go eat just called and he'll be calling back in a second hey i make myself available to those who are incarcerated you hear that be right back sorry ladies and gentlemen in the state of california in the correctional system they get free calls so he'll be calling right back we are talking about his cousin starting a business in one of these little weak states in the united states and he's looking for the best way to start a business and I'm giving them the same information that we've given most of our people with the mega pack because couldn't give you a better 
set of instructions for setting up a business and we set those businesses up for the mega pack. Again, the videos done today are primarily focused on that. Got one more thing I need to talk about, so I'll be right back. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'll be doing another video talking about the fits video and describing exactly what it is that they saw according to the reality. Give me a second, let me turn this off. Sorry, I was taking care of some other business. There we go. All right, be that as it may. Let's go ahead and finish talking about the creating of money and what constitutes money and how it is created. You have two videos that were done talking about the creation of money. Then you have the videos that were done today that will be merged together and posted shortly after this one is up. I would pay attention to the information. I would download the information in the link through ChatGPT. Why? Because it explains exactly what the law says and how you get to create this. They knew that eventually this information was going to get out. They have been waiting and it's time. I really do feel it's time. Now look, I tell everybody that I don't watch other people's videos to get information from them and I don't, don't definitely don't bite off of nobody and their so-called information. The information that I have that I give, and again, it doesn't cost you anything because, pay attention, the God I serve is the one who helps me with the information. Okay? Now, I need to do something, if y'all don't mind. And then for, for the video's sake, hey, we finish. But I need to ask ChatGPT a question. So we're going to open up a new chat, and we're going to ask the regular chat. We ain't going to ask the, the pro X-Gen chat. We're going to ask the regular preview chat. So watch this. Can you give me the definition for ridicule? Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a very important word. So let's find out what ridicule means. Ridicule is a noun. The act of making someone or something the object of scornful laughter by mocking or deriding them. Speech or behavior intended to cause contemptuous laughter at a person or thing derision. Ridicule to subject someone to something or something to mockery or derision. It's called deriding someone. Literally deriding someone. To make fun of or to laugh at someone, something in a contemptuous, dismissive way. The essence, ridicule involves mockery or belittling someone or something to provoke laughter or scorn. Wake up. Wake up. Does the word ridicule have any origin with the word ridiculous? Stop listening. Etymology. Etymology. Can you hear me say stop listening? I get tired of its stupidity. But etymology, we got to know the, the where the word came from. Yes, the word ridicule and ridiculous share a common origin and are etymology. Etymology. Related. Etymologically, both words derive from the Latin verb redere, which means to laugh. <laughs> Ridicule. To come, it comes from the Latin word ridiculum. Ridiculum, meaning a joke, laughable thing. It entered the English language in the early 1700s and is referred to in speech or actions intended to cause contemptuous laughter at a person or a thing. Oh, he's just simply ridiculous. Now, the reason why I say that is because I want to show you all something. Do you mind? Even if you did, I don't care. This is the book of Second Peter, the Apostle Peter. And this is what he says in the third chapter. We're going to start with verse number three. First of all, know this, 
that in the last days, these days, the days that we're living in, ridiculers, ridiculous people, will come with their ridiculous speech. Ridicule. Proceeding according to their own desires. And saying, hey, where is this promised presence of his? Why, since the day our forefathers fell asleep in death, all things are continuing exactly the way they were from creation's beginning. Don't you hear people saying that? Well, when, when, is, when is this end going to come? They've been saying the end is going to come for decades, centuries, millennia, and the end has never come? Hold on. Let's find out if he's got an answer for us, because if he's going to talk about it, he must be ready to give us an answer. For they deliberately ignore this fact. Pay attention. He's about to give us facts and conclusions. That long ago, there were heavens and an earth standing firmly out of water and in the midst of water by the word of God. What was the word of God? The book of Genesis. Let's go. I haven't even clicked on this before. So let's see what it is. Genesis, the first chapter where he says, let there be an expanse and let there be a division between the waters and the waters and a separation between the waters, which people call firmament. See, people forgot about that. People forgot that at one point, water covered the whole earth. And he separated the waters to where there was water above, a blanket of water surrounding the earth. Scientists have spoken of this. Well, let's, let's check on that. Let's make sure of that. I got a question. What is the science that references that there used to be a blanket of water covering the earth? The earth. Stop listening. He's thinking. He's clarifying the question. He is weighing it. He's clarifying the theory, the thought, the concept that I'm referring to may be the water vapor canopy theory. Pay attention. There used to be a blanket of water over the earth. Not because scientists says it, but because the evidence says it. So when the Bible says he let the floodgates of the heavens open up, now they, oh, look at that. He, they talk about it from the Bible, sometimes simply called the canopy theory. This idea has been proposed by some creationist perspectives and suggests that before the biblical flood described in the book of Genesis, the earth was surrounded by a canopy of water or ice. This canopy was theorized to have collapsed, resulting in the flood that covered the earth. Here are some key points of the water vapor canopy theory proposed effects. Now watch this. The mainstream science, there isn't a widely accepted theory that proposes a blanket of water covering the earth in the form of a vapor canopy. However, there are scientific hypotheses related to the earth's early creation. And this scientist theorized in this theory that over 4 billion years ago, the Earth may have been a global ocean after the planet cooled down from molten state because of blah, blah, blah. Water world. Hypothesis. This suggests that early Earth was predominantly covered by ocean with minimal land mass due to the higher sea levels and different tectonic activity. Snowball Earth. Although not about water covering the earth, this hypothesis proposes that the earth's surface was once entirely, nearly entirely frozen over. Okay, hold on. They get that from when the water fell, the parts furthest away from the sun froze immediately. The hypothesis suggests that the earth was had an extensive ocean, but not accepted scientific theory describing a water canopy, blah, 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 blah. Wake up. Your ignorance is baffling comma i didn't ask you about theories comma i asked you specifically about the scientific proof that there was a layer of water above the earth because scientists have discovered the remnants of such question mark Stop listening. This is the last question I'm going to ask. I don't have any more questions for it. He decided, because it's listening to us. It saw me go to the book of Peter's. It's an AI system, people. This I'm talking to ChatGPT, but it's the AI system communicating with ChatGPT. It's what I'm dealing with. 
could you please provide detailed references to the specific happy to provide blah, 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 blah. Wake up. Sorry. Are you telling me that you have no idea about the scientific research that speak about the water pollock particles in the extreme upper atmosphere? Comma, you have to be kidding me with your stupidity. Question mark. Stop listening. Just like they've been looking for water on Mars, they've been looking for water in the upper atmosphere of the Earth. Remember, there's not supposed to be any water up there because the sun would have evaporated it. So why is there water vapor up there? Now, uh uh-oh, he's sorry for his misunderstanding. Yes, the scientific research that discusses the presence of water particles in the extreme upper atmosphere. One notable phenomenon, they call it a phenomenon, nothing but a phenomenon, anyway, is the noctiluscent clouds, also known as the polar myosophic clouds, which are composed of tiny ice crystals. These clouds form an at to two at altitudes of 76 to 85 kilometers or it's 47 to 53 miles high which you see all that heat them them uh rockets be going through getting back into the earth atmosphere that should be burning up it should be burning up but it ain't burning up in the mesosphere making them the highest clouds in the earth's atmosphere The key point of these clouds is that the water in the upper atmosphere formation condition, they form under extreme cold temperatures and are typically observed during the summer months at high altitudes, latitudes. Composition ice crystals in these clouds are formed in water vapors that has ascended into the mesosphere where it condenses into dust particles, often um, meteoric origin. No, they're not of meteoric origin. They don't come from meteors. They're saying it's the meteors that come through our atmosphere that leave the ice particles. Really? That makes no sense. In addition to these clouds, water vapor and ice particles have been detected in other parts of the upper atmosphere, though satellite observation, uh, through satellite observation and atmospheric Sounding rockets. These presence of these waters in high altitudes can affect blah, 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 blah. Okay, scientists have discovered that there were water vapors up there. So he let the floodgates of the heavens, let it drop, and it dropped. That's where Ticket Little comes from. The sky is falling, the sky is falling. This is where it comes from. That's why in every culture in the entire world, there is a flood story. Of course it would be. Everybody would have had some type of history associated with it. So thus there is that association with every single story. Anyway, back to the hotel. Now he says, and that by means of the word world, by those means, the world of that time suffered a destruction when it was flooded with water. But by the same word, the heavens and the earth that are now existing are reserved for fire. Fire? Fire? Fire! No, no, not that type of fire. This is not a literal fire. That's why they're reserved. This fire is destruction. Another word for fire is destruction. Let's prove this. Wake up. Wake up. Did you know that another word for fire would be destruction and vice versa? Can you please explain why someone would use the word fire to denote destruction or destruction to denote fire? Stop listening. I hate this version because he it makes it look like it's doing something worthwhile, and it ain't doing nothing. It's doing the same thing it's always done. It's just making it look like it's doing more than what it did before. Oh, God. And that's because some idiot got a hold of me. Well, we can add this to it and make it look like we're doing something different, like we have something new. 
it'll take longer and but the people will see these words flashing on the screen and they'll think we're doing something and thus they will and then it will say it took 185 billion seconds to respond okay we're just gonna play the, the beginning okay hold on y'all certainly the words fire and destruction are often closely associated because fire is a force that can cause significant destruction while they aren't direct synonyms Fire is frequently used metaphorically to represent destruction due to its ability to consume and devastate. Regarding your question about someone using the word fire to denote destruction or causing destruction to the notifier, there might be some confusion with similar sounding words or terms. Let's explore some possibilities. Pyre. A pyre is a pile of combustible material. Sorry, it, it used the word notifier and see destruction to the word fire so don't worry about it just want to show that the words are close related so in scripture oftentimes when it speaks of destruction by fire and you'll see that it will have the same connotation so they are reserved for fire and are being kept until the day of judgment and of destruction of the ungodly people so destruction doesn't mean burning in nobody's hell or he's going to destroy the earth with fire this time like some people preach and teach. They don't get that from any place else other than from the Bible and they get it because they misunderstand the wording. It's not my fault. All they got to do is study. I have studied. No, you haven't. You've gone by your own predisposed disposition as opposed to studying the same way you would study the law. You don't go into the law trying to already say what you think you already think it means. That's not how the law works, and the scriptures don't work that way either. You can't come into the scriptures with trying to understand them with a predisposed opinion of what it's saying. You have to take it for what it says, and the Bible is not literal at every single time, and that's the problem with man. They're always trying to take it literally when they don't even want to be taken literally. But he says, however, do not let this escape your notice, beloved one, that one day is with Jehovah as a thousand years. Of course, his days would be longer than ours. And a thousand years is as one day, not exactly a day, not exactly a thousand years. It could be a little bit more, a little bit less. Doesn't, doesn't matter because we don't know. We don't care because none of us live for a thousand years. So what do we care that a day to God is a thousand years other than the fact that he told Adam, the day you eat from this tree is the day you will die. It was one of his days, not one of Adam's days. Adam lived to be, according to scripture, 930 years old. Adam lived to be 930 years old. That means that he died within the day. The day you eat from this tree is the day you will positively die. He did keep his word. Adam died that day. Pay attention. Jehovah is not slow concerning his promise. What promise? Where is this promised presence of his? The presence of his son, that promise. So look, Jehovah's not slow. As some people consider the ridiculers, the ridiculous people, as some people, ridiculous people, those are the people he's talking about, consider slowness. But he is patient even with the ridiculous people, with you, because he does not desire any to be destroyed, but desires all to attain to repentance. He wants all of you to just listen and obey. I don't want to obey nobody. And that's okay. You don't have to. You don't have to. He's got, uh-oh, sorry. I said listen. <laughs> and it listened. Now I turn it completely off. Won't be listening no more. Get on out of here. Ladies and gentlemen, it's okay. You ain't got to do it. That's right. He's got something reserved for you. And it's being kept alive for you. That's right. So you ain't got to listen. He, he got something for you. I, I'm, I'm not joking. I'm being 100% serious. See, but Jehovah's day will come as a thief. Now, nobody sits at home waiting for a thief. Because the thief never comes when you're expecting him to come. He always comes when you're not expecting him to come. That's what makes a good thief. He makes sure you ain't at home. So, But Jehovah's day will come as a thief in which the heavens will pass away. What heavens? Not the literal heavens. 
He says that the heavens and the earth remain here forever. So the universe and his heavens, definitely, there's no reason to get rid of that one. So what heavens is he talking about? Well, heaven usually denotes rulership. It doesn't just denote the sky. You see, God rules from heaven. So heaven denotes rulership. So the rulership of the earth is passing away with a roar. And the elements, all of this junk that they've created and put together, all these little stupid governmental systems, being intensely hot, will be dissolved. They will cease to operate. And the earth and the works in it will be exposed. Pay attention. Same context, same understanding. Since all of these things are to be dissolved, in this way, consider... What sort of persons ought you to be in holy acts of conduct and deeds, the, the, the deeds of God of devotion? As you keep, uh, excuse me, as you await and keep close in mind the presence of the day of Jehovah, through which the heavens will be destroyed in flames and the elements will melt in the intense heat. Again, it says flames and it says elements. We just talked about the elements and the works of the earth will be exposed. Okay, so we know it's not with fire. It's just a symbolism. And because of all of that pressure, they will melt. But there is a new heavens. Uh-oh. A new form of rulership. See, new heavens and a new earth. Ah, new society of man. It only mentions new heavens and a new earth four times in the Bible. Twice in Isaiah. And I can't think of the other one, but I do. Oh, my bad. Sorry. Pay attention. There you go. Twice in Isaiah and twice in Revelation. I should have known the other one was Revelation, the 21st chapter. I know that. I don't know why I drew a blank right there. But four times it mentions new heavens and new earth. Doesn't mean a new literal heavens and a new literal earth. He already says the earth and the sun and the moon will exist forever. So he's not contradicting himself. New heaven, rulership. New earth, society of man. Not that there's going to be new people, no. Individuals who are going to listen and obey, who are going to do what they're supposed to do, you know, who's going to follow instructions, comply with the law, his law, not yours. And in these righteousness, righteous people will dwell. So, I'm doing this video because I forgot to mention to people that the information that I get comes from him. It's not no voice in my ear. I ain't hearing nobody's voice. It's a simple understanding. Like I said, the understanding, once it's received, is as if I've already always known the information. Now, this information that I'm sharing with you in the video that will be up later after this that I've been having so much trouble putting up, I've known this for over 40 years. It just wasn't time to... Give that information out to people. I haven't discussed this stuff with nobody. I mean, no, hold on now. Let me, let me correct some. I've discussed it, but never quite in this format where I'm pointing out every single thing. But if you look at this, and if you look at the programs at SACOM, that's all I did was incorporated it into each of the programs. And now you get to do the same thing. We set the... We set the pattern for you. We set the stage for you. We set it in motion before you even had the opportunity of considering its motion. Pay attention. So that nobody can tell you, oh, no, you can't do that. Too late. They already did. And they're still doing it. You better go talk to them. You can send them to me. I will definitely have a conversation. Now, look, ladies and gentlemen, I... Thank you for letting me share that with you, but I got to go because I got to go finish this video and I got to go to sleep. I'm tired. I, I, I will tell you something. I decided to put me some vegetable tables in the pot. And then after I put my vegetable tables, because I only do frozen, I can't do raw vegetable tables because they will, they will spoil on me to death. They will spoil. So I put them in the pot and then I threw some rice in the pot. Then I threw some little sauces in the pot. Then I threw some shrimp in the pot. And then I threw some okra. Now, that was the thing that made it man. That's what made the whole meal. And I let that cook and cook and cook and then simmer. 
and then added my sauce at the end. And I'm telling you, I got the itis. I should have been asleep an hour ago. I'm on my, it's 630. I'm on my way to sleep because that was my first and only meal of the day for the most part. So what I'm telling you is, and I'm going to be honest with you, for those of you who would like to know this type of stuff, when I had the operation and my temperature got to be 126 degrees plus, they fried my taste buds. That's right. That's what happens when you get to that high of a temperature. Your taste buds, they just get fried too. Boom. Everything literally tastes like paper to me. Literally. I used to have to drown my food in salt and spices and all kind of stuff. Why? Because I couldn't taste it. Well, guess some what? Guess some what? Ladies and gentlemen, I don't have to do that anymore. Because while on vacation in Puerto Rico, I asked my God to help me so that when I do eat food, that I enjoy it. Especially the food that I cook. That's why I'm often cooking and I'm not eating anybody else's food. I do not eat other people's food. But I do cook a lot. You always hear me talking about me cooking something. And I'm promising you, I can't, I haven't cooked a bad meal in a long time. And I mean long time. I, I got to go back to the 80s in order to think about a bad meal where, oh, no, I got to throw that junk out. You know what I mean? I ain't had to do that since then. So all I can tell you is, and people say, well, that's because you do blah, 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 blah. Shut up. Because I have a history of people talking about coming over to my place to eat, enjoying the food that I cook. So my mama told me I could cook. And she she didn't just tell me that because I was her baby. My mama had seven kids, eight if you count my sister who died of crib death. My mama had seven kids. All of her kids can cook. But my mama told me I could cook. You know what I mean? You feel me? Just want to make sure there was only two of us that my mama credited us with cooking. My younger sister and me. I'm just letting you know. Don't I, I'm, don't take my word for it, because when I cook, I tried to make my meals taste just like my mother's. That was my job. Making the meal taste just like hers. So that's the credit I give her. All right. I, I done went too far telling you all about cooking and my mama and all of that stuff. Y'all don't need to know about that. Go on about your business now. Y'all know. Go on now. Speak to y'all some other time. Go watch the flying fish some other place. 